Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically how to import comments and edits from Microsoft Word into a Scrivener document that you can line up side by side with what you're working on. And by talk, of course, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below, ask me questions, or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So I posted on um, Instagram the other day uh, that I had gotten edits back for my newest manuscript and that I was, I had, I had imported them into Scrivener and that I was working on them there. And I posted a screenshot of what my screen looked like. And I got several comments that said, what, you can do this in Scrivener, how do you do this? And so I thought I would make a really quick video to demonstrate how to do that. So I took chapter one from my first book, Anya and the Dragon, and that's what I'm going to be kind of um, working with and showing you how to do this, you know, edits import. So this over here is the Microsoft Word version of that chapter and I kind of edited it a little bit already you can see over here yeah I I did both comments and then inline edits because the comments will uh, transfer over to Scrivener pretty easily but those inline comments that's kind of the sticky part so that's what we've got to do a little bit of work on so if you were trying to import your Microsoft Word based edits and those inline comments like right here are very important to you then you'll want to do what I'm about to do first so when you open up the document this is how it's going to pop up um, at first so you'll have your the pane over on the side right here that has your edits in it look I just did this <laughs> um, and you'll probably be actually on the home screen so this is what your your um, toolbar at the top will look like so come over here to review click on that and then this is your like this is where you would turn on your track changes and check out your markup and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do here is go to the reviewing pane. And we get to see kind of everything, and then come here to the accept or reject area. So come here to the very top and just select that. And if you like that inline change, hit accept. Okay. And then it will move on kind of automatically to the next one, hit accept. And you can skip the comments, anything that's like a comment rather than an inline change. So just hit that button and go to the next one. And then we pop down here. So I inserted very, and let's say like me as the author, I'm like, you know what? I don't like that change. So I'm gonna hit reject and it's gonna delete it. And yes, he has cyborg legs, accept and on and on we go. So let's just keep on accepting, and this is a comment, so we'll skip it, reject, and accept, and accept. Okay, so now over here we've only got comments, great. Save it, and then I'm gonna come in here to my Scrivener. So I have the original version, that unchanged version of the Microsoft Word document in here. In order to import, there's a couple of different ways you can import. You can go to File, Import, and then you can import a file. Import it that way. So I imported, it is, it's just gonna, because I was selected on, on this one. Um, so when you import, it's just gonna pop it in a document right down below that. And then we can open them up side by side. I'll stretch this out. The edits will be on this side, and then I'll make my original over here. Ta-da! So, side by side. Bigger. Okay. So there we go, side by side. And you can see over here with the edits that I imported that this is here as an inline um, comment. Now, let's say we don't want this as an inline comment. We want it over here as a comment in the sidebar. So file, oops, sorry, Scrivener preferences. And you're gonna click on sharing, this part right here. And these are default unclicked. I click them on to change everything to inline, but these are default unclicked. 
So import comments as inline annotations, import footnotes as inline annotations. So let's leave those off. You want to keep this on update styles to match the destination style so you don't have a bunch of fonts all over the place. Um, but you can ignore the style sheet if you want to just import as like a rich text, no style document. But anyway, so click these off. So we're going to import comments not as inline annotations. So that's going to go there. And another way to import stuff is just to drag it. So this is that file of mine. So I'm just going to drag it in here and it just drags right in. And now we can see, so here's my new, I'll change it to that, and then this will be inline. Okay, so, so I've got my comments and my inline. So over here, I'm selected over here. These are, I have um, the comments imported as comments. So you can see over here, they're in the comments part of the inspector. But over here, the inline, they're in here as inline annotations. So onions are great. We'd go right here. If I click on this, it'll pop up. Onions are great are in the, that, that comment is actually inline. So, um, so yeah, I prefer, personally, I prefer these because it allows me to just kind of jump around in my document. You can use these as, as kind of bookmarks and you cannot do that with these. However, if you're just scrolling through, these are really good for if you're just scrolling and you have to switch back and forth because watch this. So I'm selected on here and these are over here, but then if I click over here, they go away. So I can't see them anymore. So advantages, disadvantages of each side. I like these because I can use them as bookmarks to jump around but these will stay visible no matter where you are selected. So it's kind of up to you of <laughs> where you, what you select. But now you know how to, and you know kind of the procedure for importing things. So you can click the file import, or you can just drag this in over here to the binder wherever you want it. So there's two different ways to do it. And yeah, kind of the, the, the downside of this is that if you have over here as like comments, comments, or, you know, kind of tagged as commented on this side, then those are not going to come in. It's going to import in whatever the change was, whether it was accepted or not. So now I've got these changes in here, right? So let's save. This is my original. This is my new one. In here, I added in very bad goat. And even though in here I did not accept it, I didn't reject it. It's just the, the edit that my agent editor, whoever put in, we come into here. So this is those, these are those new edits. So right here, it says you're a very bad goat. And over here, it just says you're a bad goat because that was the change. And if you don't um, accept or reject, then it's going to just include it. Now, if you implicitly trust your agent or editor to only add or take away like little word choice punctuation things um, that you would agree with and you are like, yeah, I'll just go with whatever they say, then this isn't a problem. Just import it and all of their changes will just pop up in here as, as being correct and you can kind of move on. But if you're a little bit more of a stinker like some of us, I'm pointing at myself, um, some of us, you um, will want to go through every single little change they made and be like, actually, that's where a comma is supposed to go. You shouldn't have deleted it because you're a pedantic twerp. <laughs> so um, it just depends on how you feel about your, about your, you know, your manuscript and, and your relationship with your agent and your editor and all of that stuff. Um, little word choice things might be worth skipping as far as when you're going through early edits because that kind of stuff is, uh, you know, that's that's for later, like little things like that. Early edits are more for big, giant, you know, plot things and that kind of stuff. So I would recommend, or, or you know, take, take that into consideration. Anyway, this is a 14 minute video and it doesn't need to be this long, so I'm gonna end it. I really hope that this was helpful to you. Um, and I hope you learned something new about importing edit stuff into Scrivener. 
If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.